their ribs, give them gentle pressure. What I want you to do for me, Kevin, is I want you to push my hands away from, from you. Okay, so push it out. Okay, and back down again. And I don't want you to raise this up here. I don't want you to tighten your neck muscles. What I want you to do is simply push my hands. That's better. Do you see a difference? Frequency or likelihood? It can happen. Okay. It can happen. Frequency, not as not terribly often. You, t you typically see that with somebody who comes in with a background of unilateral trauma or something yeah. that's very unilateral yeah. specific. Yeah, or you know what I've seen it too is that with people with pelvic ring instability, which okay. unilateral, then that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. That they would. That but that things would to watch for, things to avoid. You want to avoid posterior pelvic tilt, mm -hmm. and that's the other reason I I don't have a problem with your knees up like this. But the tendency for posterior pelvic tilt is higher. So if you want more hip flexion, then what I would do is just put them over two pillows. Not a lot of ribcage motion here, just with diaphragmatic breathing, but not ribcage motion. And then flexion here in the thoracal lumbar junction. I don't want to see a lot there. I want, to, I want this to be more isolated here, bullet from here down. It's more of a contractile response here. And then, uh, of course, there's superficial muscles. That's why I'm palpating, I'm detecting. I'm seeing if things are happening here. And then, of course, a rapid contraction, I want it to be a slow onset. If they go zuck and it tightens up really quick, that's not the kind of contractile response I'm looking for. I really want something that's gonna build gradually over you know, a half second.